Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Berlinale Talents 2014. It's my great pleasure to introduce you the session Taking the Lead, Nina Hoss. And please welcome our dear moderator, Peter Kaui. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Nina Hoss is perhaps the perfect role model for any aspiring actor because she has been to drama school here in the city. Uh, she has become a member of the Deutsches Theater. She's been on the stage many times. She's done television work. But most of all, she's been successful on the big screen with uh, a number of films uh, made by directors of the so-called Berlin School, notably uh, Christian Petzold, and in 2007, she won a silver bear here for Yella, and she went on to make Jericho and Barbara with him, and she's now in post-production with his next film called Phoenix. Uh, she's just completed uh, a film uh, called uh, A Most Wanted Man, directed by Anton de Corbijn, and that is based on a novel by John le Carre, and unfortunately features one of the last performances by Philip Seymour Hoffman. So we're very happy that Nina's here this afternoon to discuss her craft and her art with us. So please welcome Nina Hoss. So Nina, we have uh, extracts from uh, five of your films today, but before we show the first one, uh, perhaps you could say, what, when you were at school, did you want to be an actress very young? Or what made you join uh, Drama Academy here? Well, I guess it had something to do that my mother is an actress and later became a director, director, head of a theater, and so on. So I was always, I think as a baby even, I was on a blanket uh, in her rehearsals watching the, the actors work so I, I was kind of always in that world but mm -hmm. mainly theatre, only theatre mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. and I pretty much at the age of five I always wanted to go on a stage sing something and so I was not afraid of it and yes. somehow something yeah I don't know I, I was always fascinated by actors and then pretty early it was decided that I, that's what I want to do mm. And, and looking back at your, your time at the, um, at the Ernst Busch Drama School, what did you get from that? Was it, is, would you recommend young actors to go to drama school or can that be skipped, do you think, looking back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, you know, because, I mean, there are many examples of film actors who have never attended mm. uh, exactly. an acting school and they're brilliant, mm. you know. So if you have a great talent you can also I guess learn while doing mm -hmm. but I made the experience especially if you want to work on stage I would recommend to have that mm -hmm. uh, um, how do you call it like to, that you go to acting school because you can test yourself yes. and learn without already a public audience that judges you mm -hmm. so you can make mistakes you fail you stand up again and you mm -hmm. also it's a great time yeah. As a student, it was fantastic uh, four years for me to be on that school, and uh, and you learn dancing and fencing and uh, what what not. So it's it's everything, and you work on one scene for six weeks. I mean, yeah. then when you're out in the professional world, that's when yeah. you do a play. You know, you you will never have the time to work on each sentence so yeah. thoroughly. You know, like in, in th these days, and so it educated me to be able to have a script or a playwright uh, and work on it on my own mm. without mm. having to always be dependent or rely on the director or my my fellow colleagues mm. so for that reason i think it it gives you self-confidence as an actor uh, having been uh, in acting school that's at least what i yeah. can say for myself were you already there when you made the girl rosemary in 19 yeah, yeah yeah i was it was i was in my first year mm -hmm. of acting school and uh, in those days, that has changed, I think, sadly, but uh, you weren't allowed to go out and shoot or do theater performances or whatever in those days. Mm. So, but they, they did give me that chance because I asked for it, yeah. because I said, Mensch, Bernd Eichinger, it was a very yeah. famous uh, producer who sadly passed away, uh, but um, 
and it was a brilliant script. It was an amazing part for, mm -hmm. I was 19, you know, or, or mm -hmm. 20 then. And I, it was just something, I said, I can't mm -hmm. not do it, uh, but, but please let me come back. <laughs> and, and then they, uh, they agreed. Yeah. And then several years passed, and you suddenly you're in White Masai, which is 2005, I think. Uh, three, even. three, maybe yeah. shot in three, but really, okay. Yeah, and, uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the most demanding parts you've ever had, I would think, because you were on location for eight weeks in Africa. Mm -hmm. Do you say, tell us about that, how you how you all survived, how how big the crew was? And, it, I, I can't even tell how many people. I, I guess it was 130 or 100. Yeah, yeah, it, it was huge. Also. And we lived in the bushes with the Samburu warriors. It is a story about a white Swiss lady going, a, a true story, going to live with a Maasai and marry him and uh, then about her experiences there with, with him and the, and the Samburu tribe. And we actually lived with them in the bush, as you said, for eight weeks. And in a camp, uh, we, I was in a tent for, for eight weeks and we pretty much expre experienced what life is. Other than we didn't li live in these huts, you know, that was a bit... I was once in there, there was one scene when uh, I'm heavily pregnant and uh, uh, the baby's about to come and all that and uh, they built this hut and we were in it and I remember it was raining these worms you know, because it was fresh coo, uh, cow yeah. poo. Yeah. And yeah. I just said, oh, no, no, no. I can't. That yeah. would be really yeah. too much. So we didn't experience that. We had tents at least. But, but that shows in the film. It has an authentic quality. Yeah. Both the acting and the shooting. Everything is very authentic in that. Yeah, it helps you. Yeah. At least for me, I'm very curious, mm -hmm. I think. I'm a curious person, and I love uh, getting to know people from different cultures, see how they live, how they... That's what I really love about my profession, that it brings me to places like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. and I can have a little glimpse mm -hmm. on what, how people live and how, they, uh, how their outlook is on life. And, uh, and, uh, and you actually feel like... I can be here because I'm working. Mm -hmm. You know, as a tourist, I would never go for eight weeks there, they, yes. and they wouldn't want me there. And why yes. should I be there? But like that, you you really make experiences um, that you possibly couldn't have right. without being an actor or a director. Yes. Or so, yeah, and it really helps for the part. Right. It helps you um, just like like uh, especially if you shoot chronologically, mm -hmm. then you can just experience it with her mm. in a way you know you are naive at the beginning and mm. the more you work with them the more you know and mm. sometimes they also get on your nerves like it mm. happened to her and, and all these things and uh, that that really helped me a lot yeah. or you feel how difficult it was yeah. you know? and, and did the script evolve during those eight weeks were there changes as a result of all being together and location were there any scenes where you, you suddenly it started raining when it should have been sun and so you had to change yeah that that always i never really experienced that you change the book mm -hmm. sometimes you have to improvise and uh, maybe it was meant to be outside but then you maybe find somewhere a roof of a hut or whatever and then you do it there because it's raining and and so on but you don't um you hardly ever change the, like the lines or, uh, or anything like that. That's, uh, yeah. Well, let's see the first extract, which shows you, uh, uh, after a rather uh, brutal initiation, you, uh, you decide to make up with, with, uh, with your friend, the, the, the tall, handsome Mazai warrior, and you follow him to his village, which is quite an experience. You gradually follow him into the bush. So can we have the first extract, please?
Was that film shot in continuity or all over the shop, really? Yeah, almost, yeah. We had the chance to shoot it uh, in continuity. But when I watch it now, I think, oh, God, what did she do? <laughs> Why did she do that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I felt like that also. But, I mean, these people were so nice and so welcoming and made it really easy for us to, to, to um, portray that, that story. What part of Africa was it? Shot? In uh, uh, Kenya. In Kenya. Yeah. That's, so we also shoot, uh, shot parts in Nairobi and Mombasa, right. mm -hmm. but mainly there, somewhere the in the bush. Came, the, the main actor came from Burkina Faso, yeah. I think, originally. Yeah. And he, Burkina. I mean, he had quite a journey with that part because he was there, I think, six weeks before we all came because people from Burkina Faso, he told me, they are more strong within their bone structure yeah. and all of that. So he was quite a strong man. And the Sambus are thin, as you saw, really thin. It's the tribe where you sometimes see photos of them where they jump. That's yeah. very high up, yeah. you know. Yeah. So he had to train that, which is really hard. Because mm -hmm. there's a scene where he has to jump up. It's like a competition mm. who jumps the highest. And uh, so they trained all that with him. And he was on a very strict diet and all of that. So learned the language. And, mm -hmm. well, as for him, it was really <laughs> tough work. Uh, moving on to Yella, uh, this was made by Christian Petzold, who in a way has come to symbolize with others the so-called Berlin School of, of Directing. Do you want to say something about the Berlin School? I think Gold was directed by Thomas Arsman. He's also a member of that school in quotes is it informal or is it a, are they all friends uh, these, how, how well, they, they are friends and I mean there is something like a group uh, I, I would call it because some of them <clears throat> sorry show first drafts of uh, well maybe not first drafts of scripts but sometimes they they, they exchange uh, you know they're in exchange of what they're doing and mm. working on and um, bounce off ideas, I guess. Uh, all these. So there are meetings, so in a way there is a group. But um, this definition, Berliner Schule, I think is very hard to have a grip on because I think they're also very different directors. Yeah. You know, it's just maybe a certain style of, uh, a certain way of aesthetics, mm -hmm. a certain mm -hmm. way of yeah. exploring and telling yeah. something about our country mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and that that's maybe something that they have in common you know but they i i think they didn't come up with a name yeah, right. it was a label yeah. a, a label was needed and benjamin heisenberg is also a member i just saw his new film this morning it's wonderful it's going to be a huge success I, yeah. fantastic film if you have a chance to see it it's called uber ich und du super egos in english a real dark horse it was very well received at the Panorama. Great. So, I, so. I, I heard it's like, it's a comedy, yeah, which is yes, not black, very black usual. Comedy, dark <laughs> comedy, yeah, <laughs> very <laughs> subtle comedy. Anyway, so going back to Yella, which I think was filmed almost in continuity, wasn't it, yeah. Yella? Yeah. Uh, Christian is always taking yeah. care or trying to make it possible yeah. that um, mainly all the movies we have done together, we, we were able to shoot it mm -hmm. continuously, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not, not in total. Some things you just can't change. If you have mm -hmm. one motive, you, sometimes you have to uh, start with the end of the movie. You have to, yes. uh, because that's when you are allowed to be in that house. And how do you, as an actress, how do you cope with that? How do you keep the, the, what the character should be in your mind and then go back to another state of mind? I mean, it must be difficult to... Yeah, I have a huge respect if you have to start with the end of something. It's... Mm because you haven't been able to experience the journey with the yes. character. So uh, you have to prepare yourself very well and th think of, mm. uh, together with the colleagues and with the director, where would we want to be yes. at yes. the end, you know? Yeah. And sometimes it's also a big freedom because you can't put pressure on it, on mm. the meaning, mm. you know? Because mm. that's as, as far as you know it, Mm -hmm. And that's what you have to give. And sometimes that yeah. gives a, a bit of a, a more lightness or uh, maybe you would have tried to put more meaning into mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. after yeah. you have experienced yeah. the whole journey. Yeah. So I, t I always try to see it from a positive point of view, but I love it more if I can actually play the end of a movie when I really of course. Of course. have experienced the whole thing. 
Well, you've really been the central figure in, in uh, those now, including Phoenix Four films by Christian Petzold, right? And there's Yella, uh, Jericho, Barbara, yeah. And uh, from the outset, uh, looking at those films from, from a foreign perspective, they are all anchored in an everyday reality. Very much his films are very much today's world, although Barbara is set in around 1980, I guess, in the, in the GDR. But even so, there's a, a hard, gritty quality. There's, no, not, much, there's not much fantasy or... or um, uh, you think so? Yellow and so well, Using the word literally, I mean, it's not a, ah, okay, not okay. like Grand Budapest Hotel. Okay, okay, yeah. They, no. They're very, they're anchored in reality, and uh, you seem to be able to um, to interiorize your emotions in all of those films. You don't explode. You very rarely you do. Don't explode. You keep everything inside, very restrained. But through your features, you express a change of mind, and I think that is part of the, the success of the films, actually. How does he direct you. you? I mean, you want to say something about Christian Petzl? How, how, how much freedom does he leave you when he directs? Well, a lot, a, a lot. It's, uh, I had, we started with the film Tota Mann, which was a TV ah, production, right. and it was, I think, his first film after um, Die Innere Sicherheit. Right. I don't know the English title. Uh, does anyone know? No, but it was his first really okay. successful movie. And, um, uh, and so I experienced in Tota Mann the way he... Um, because as an actress, I don't know, you, you also have to know the aesthetics and what the director tries to portray. Mm -hmm. And when I read his scripts, I, um, I almost read a novel. Because we don't have so many dialogues in mm. Christian Petzold's movies normally. And so he describes a lot, but not by being very precise in mm -hmm. uh, what is needed for the scene. It's more like metaphors. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you get an idea of the atmosphere he mm. tries to create. And that is something where, where I start from. So okay. I try to find... Um, in any character I work on, I think, I always try to find the a resistance, mm -hmm. you know. That you never say anything without maybe a counter feeling inside you, mm. you know. I pretend to be very uh, easygoing right now, but I'm mm. kind of nervous also, you know. So I, I do say things differently. Mm. Um, and maybe I'm more concentrated now than I would be if you meet me outside having a coffee mm. or something mm. like that. So I always look for in, in the lines, the, the little lines I have, that I know, is there anything she's hiding? Mm. Or mm. is there a general feeling that she would be more outgoing, uh, mm. but she can't because she has to protect herself, like in mm. Barbara, you know? And that works within you. And you, uh, and that's why maybe that's the outcome of it, you know. That well, there's that marvelous scene at the beginning of Barbara when the camera looks down on you on the bench and you light a cigarette. You've just arrived and you haven't gone up to your appointment yet, but you express everything. You know that this woman is 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 in a state of anxiety somehow, and you don't know why. But it's anxiety it, and stubbornness. Yeah, I always stubborn, felt like right. uh, in the school ground. Yeah. You know, no, I'm not going in. Just, you know, I wait one minute, I'm going to do it. It's, it's this, also this, once you made this step of mm -hmm. being a dissident in mm. a state, you know, which takes a lot of courage, mm. uh, you, you just, you try to uh, be rebellious all the time. Mm. But you want to poke into that yes. stiffness of the state or the, the injustice and all of that. So she has both things. Right. And again, so I have to decide what do I portray when, yes, when the fear, yeah. when the, you know, being, yeah, stubborn or, mm. or you know, angry or something. So, um, and these decisions, I think, I, I, them, you have to do them yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I pretty much do it by being very well prepared. Mm -hmm. I need to be very well prepared before I go into a movie. Mm. Which means I mainly look for things. I do research. I, I read a lot uh, if there's anything to read about, like the mm. time or 
something like that. And um, so these are the facts. I have them in my mm. mind. But then I also look for the atmosphere mm. that I feel surrounds the character. And I can do that uh, uh, with music. I can do that with paintings, mm. with art uh, in general. I look for, I always have lots of uh, postcards or yeah, something. Yeah. Just um, if I need a certain inspiration, then yeah. I, I know I'm surrounded with uh, things that have something to do with my character. Right. And, um, and then when I start shooting, I forget about it. Mm -hmm. I, I try to be so well prepared and knowing what I try to portray with that character that I then can be totally open and free mm -hmm. to uh, what's there. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you have an idea and it mm -hmm. doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And then you can't be always thinking, ah, it would have been so nice. Mm -hmm. you know, it was a great idea. So, let go, you know, just look what, what um, your colleague brings. Mm. Uh, his eyes tell something really different. He decided to portray it differently from yeah. what I thought would be good, maybe, yeah. or what I hoped for. And uh, it doesn't matter. Maybe that's better, you know. Yeah. So I, because I had prepared myself, I can experience it. Mm. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm actually looking for. That's mm. the fun of it, that I can experience things different lives throughout my characters. Well, we'll see a clip from Yella now, and uh, I chose this one because up until this point in the film, y you could be dismissed as just a pretty face, and then suddenly in this scene, you reveal that you have a skill as an accountant, and that you're no fool, and that you've seen that there's a scam going on. And uh, I think it's a very good example of your craft as an actress, um, that you, you, you express things little by little through your, through your face. So can we have the next uh, clip, please?
quite a long take uh, interrupted, but you had to do that probably in one long take, did you, the, the, uh, when you were talking like that? Yeah. yeah. I think so. I can't quite and remember. You, and you have this idea. sense of foreboding. I've forgotten that when the glass drops down and you, it, it's, it goes through all the movie, doesn't it? As though you have a sense of disaster that's coming. In your sense. <clears throat> yeah, it's like something or someone or whatever that is, we don't know, calls her yeah. and um, lets her, like, she thinks she loses her ability to hear or it's like she's underwater mm -hmm. or because she was underwater at the yeah. beginning of yeah, the movie. Yeah, and yeah. so, um, and the raven is calling sometimes. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, I mean, the movie's out, the death is waiting for yeah. her now. So that's what, the, what uh, is the irritation throughout the movie. Did the silver bear you won here for that performance, did that uh, accelerate your career? Did you get offers? Uh, did that really change the, your status? I never know with prizes. I just enjoy them, <laughs> and I'm very happy. You know, it's great to receive prizes for what you've done because it's somehow the only recognition you get for a, for a movie. You know, mm. you get great reviews, which is uh, hopefully you get them. That, that's uh, very good. It makes you feel good. But uh, um, to win a prize makes you just very happy that what you try mm. to achieve is being seen and mm -hmm. um, they find it award worthy yes. but if it really changes your career I don't know I don't, uh, I'm not sure I think maybe more people are aware of you mm. that, that, that yes. for sure yeah. in a way a film like Barbara which won the silver bear for Christian Petzold but not for you probably accelerated your career more than something like Yella and because Barbara was so much more widely distributed and, True. and, yeah. and reviewed yeah, around the world. Yeah. Uh, now, Jericho must have been shot very soon after. I mean, it came out the next year, didn't it? In 2008, one year later than the After Yella. Yella. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a contemporary story of uh, your, your living with a Turkish man who has uh, set up a food distribution company and you fall in love with a man who comes to help out with that company and together you sort of decide to get rid of him. Um, and there are a lot of tensions in that film, uh, subterranean, I mean, it's subtle tensions under the surface and the hall and the, and the uh, I think this three, the, the three actors work very well together, the, the, your, your Turkish lover and the new lover. They worked extremely well. There's a subtlety in the, in the exchanges. Um, was that a happy shoot for you? Was that a good shoot? Uh, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, it was also uh, uh, difficult because the characters were difficult. Mm. You know, and they, they had, uh, we had to portray these tensions and if it's three, there's always and, and one And you weren't very sympathetic. Out. Yours is not a no. very sympathetic role. Actually. No, no. Yeah. But uh, I don't care, you know, that uh, I, sometimes the unsympathetic parts are the best uh, yeah. also, you know, I'm um, on stage, I often portray very unsympathetic uh, women, maybe in the, on the first look, yeah. I always yeah. uh, try to bring something with, that you understand how you become someone like that, yeah. you know, it's also a sort of um, battle mode or what yeah. they're, they're in yeah that makes them maybe a bit unsympathetic yeah. and that's the same with with her mm -hmm. because she didn't have a, a very funny life mm -hmm. up till that point right. and uh, so she's also very defensive immediately so she has, has a hard how do you call it like a shell yeah. something and um, or an armor on yeah. and uh, she just and now she has one chance to with this other man kind of experience something like lightness love mm. Mm. Um, and but she she has to do something very cruel mm. <laughs> to get there. In both Yella and Jericho, and to some extent Barbara, you're an, in a very male-dominated world, aren't you? And you you gradually have to emerge. You gradually have to force your way through your obstinacy. You said to, uh, to uh, and certainly in um, in uh, Jericho we see that. Uh, I'm not sure if we're ready, but we're going to see uh, when you're ready up there. We can see this clip of. Um, uh, a dance on the beach, which I think is a very charming sequence, where that's the first time you really feel an attraction to this man, this new man in, in, in the life. And uh, it's beautifully directed, I think, that scene. Beautifully directed. Could we have the next clip, please? Uh,
Do you usually have a good uh, rapport with the cinematographer on, on, on a film like that? I mean, is that important to have good relations with the cinematographer, costume designers, and so on? Do you get involved in that at all? Yeah, you get, you get involved uh, mainly with the costume designer because you have to uh, create the outside of your character together. And uh, it's very crucial what kind of shoes you're wearing, for example, or what kind of dresses, are they tight uh, or are they light? And, uh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, what would the character go for to portray herself? You know, what does she... Um, like here, for the first time, we had lots of jewelry and that, and and kind of cheap golden jewelry. So uh, because it also portrays some where you're from, yeah. what you find uh, attractive, yeah. and and, yes. how, uh, and how, so it um, it helps you to already tell something without me having to act anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, then, of course, I, I I always prefer to have a very good relationship with the cinematographer because. He films you, yeah. <laughs> so good and side, also with the light side. light guys. Uh, yeah. That's also very yeah. good if you have a good uh, relationship with them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but it's uh, the main partners you have. Yeah, I would say is maybe the cinematographer, yeah. the director, and then makeup and and costume. Yeah. That's uh, they're right on you, you mm -hmm. know, and work with you. Yeah. When you, were, when you were growing up, did you have uh, any actress who really impressed you and who later you perhaps referred to as, a, as an ideal, as a model uh, actress? Many, you know, um, yeah. I didn't, it, sometimes it's also... I, I mean, I grew up every Sunday. When I grew up, there were only three programs on television <laughs> and, uh, when I was a child. And every Sunday you would see classics. And I, was, I wasn't allowed to watch television, but mm -hmm. one film on Sunday. And so I grew up with the old Betty Davis uh, mm -hmm. films. With uh, I was also, uh, you know, a huge fan of James Stewart, of uh, all these, uh, Paul Newman, of yeah. uh, not only female act actresses, right. you know, so, but I watched all these classics, Catherine Hepburn, Humphrey Bogart, mm -hmm. all of them. They really inspired me. And, and then later on it was the French movies so mm -hmm. it was uh, Romy Schneider for sure mm -hmm. and from her um, because it seems so obvious uh, Romy Schneider but she is an amazing actress mm -hmm. you know, she was because she lets you look inside the windows you know her eyes yeah. she is uh, or she was able to uh, yeah um, give it to the audience as a gift yes, yes. and um that, for example, inspired me to never go under under it. You know, you have to. It's very exhausting acting, mm -hmm. and you have to give it your all because otherwise you don't uh, you don't experience anything, mm -hmm. and if you don't, then the audience can't. Yeah. So sometimes you have to go to the dark places, uh, or to the very light places, mm -hmm. or the. But you have to um, look for them. Apropos of that, does Christian Petzold take many takes of a scene? Is he one of those who takes 10, 15, 20 takes, or is he, say, after two takes, that's great, let's do it? One. One, really? <laughs> yeah. That shows uh, confidence. It, not the last movie we shot. Yeah. That, um, that required a different way of, of, uh, of doing it, okay. because it was, uh, for the first time, really more like a... Um, in German, you say Kammerspiel. I don't quite know what, yeah, what yeah. you would say in chamber English. Chamber play. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. A chamber play. And um, so with lots of dialogues. And uh, so you, you can't, you have to... Then it's, it, it's more close to theater. You have to yeah. put it in your mouth. You, know? you yeah. have to really rehearse it quite often and also be able to try it like that and then mm. make another take to just give it another, I hate the word, word variation, but yeah. it is a bit like that, that mm. you, you had a little sense of, oh yeah, ah, I have to give more yeah. into this. So you need more takes, but um, normally it's one take. And right at the beginning you said that there are very talented actors who've never been to drama school and they're fabulous. But very often, particularly in America, they don't know how to articulate. Someone like Harrison Ford, say, very great presence. You don't understand what they're saying. That's why you love saying. them also, though. <laughs> yeah. But um, 
you obviously you articulate extremely well. I think it's one of your strong points that, that every word of every piece of dialogue that you pronounce is absolutely clear. Is that something you focus on and you always try to, to do? Actually, no. But I think it's something that you do definitely learn in, in acting school. And uh, I also think it also shows something of your character. Does someone speak mm. very clearly? Mm -hmm. Then I think there are no rules, you know. Yeah. That's, that's no, more what I mean. It's, yeah. uh, you don't fulfill any, any expectations, you know, yeah. because people want to understand you or whatever. I do prefer also mm. if I understand actors, but it portrays something. If you mumble, then mm -hmm. your character maybe is too shy to yes. speak clearly and uh, tries to speak. It, it, it expresses something mm. uh, again. So it's again a decision mm. you make for your character. And uh, I don't really think about articulation, but I think don't shy away if I, because then it, it, it can also mean that the actress doesn't know what she, yeah. Tried, yeah. that she had made no yeah. decision. Um, Barbara is set, uh, I'm guessing, 1980, around 1980, yeah, in the GDR, and uh, although it was a big success, I'm sure there are some people who haven't seen it. Perhaps you could say how uh, you and Christian Petzold uh, approached the setting which you didn't want to put up in lights. This is the GDR in 1980. It's all suggested. You have to guess that as a spectator as you go along and you have to realize, well, this is not quite today. And then you have to realize this is not quite the West Germany we know. And then little by little, it comes into focus. Um, uh, and you're on screen so uh, a vast majority of the time in that film. It must have been very, very exhausting. To, to play that yeah, role. exhausting, but also exciting mm. to uh, have the chance to uh, yeah be with her for so long. Mm. Yeah, and to to because it, I sometimes find it more difficult if you have uh, like a couple of days to portray a character. You know, mm. I always I'm I'm very uh, have I feel for the actors who come on set for one day or three days or whatever because you don't have the chance you think you need to portray that character with in its whole someness <laughs> where it comes from where does he come from what does he want now yeah. and is he funny or sad or what is, you have to make and, and you don't have the chance to um, just let it happen yeah. Yeah. and with that if you're yeah. always on screen I know well I don't have to put everything in each scene because in the next scene mm. you'll see that she's afraid and maybe and then you it's it's something yeah it's also again you have to prepare mm -hmm. before you're going into a scene because otherwise you're too mm -hmm. like this all the time because you want to make the audience understand what you mm -hmm. what you try to portray so it it relaxes me a lot yes. if i know i have time yeah. with the character. Mm. Uh, where, where was that film shot, or where were most of the locations? Very close to Berlin. Right. Um, jetzt habe ich den Namen vergessen. Yeah. Gibt's ja gar nicht. Uh, but the water, the uh, sea, where you see the seashore, that was up there. It's such a weird name that I forgot yeah. it. Am I crazy? Uh, oh God, I'm sorry, because they, they probably... Right. Oh God. <laughs> What's it called? But I mean, it's very atmospheric, where, where you do all the... Uh, you have to learn to do all this cycling back and forth. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, that, that was and on the, the trees are waving and that uh, was on the uh, not you don't say east sea, uh, Baltic Sea, ah. yeah, and um, yeah, that was in, uh, in another we shot that uh, at the Baltic Sea. Yeah. Actually, I think the same cliff where we shot uh, Jericho. Okay. Yeah, Christian likes to go back to the yeah, yeah, <laughs> place. Yeah. It seems because uh, we shot Barbara and now Phoenix. That's why it's ridiculous that I don't know the name in the same location, very okay. close to Brandenburg. So, uh, also, naja. Is Phoenix a, is Phoenix a contemporary <laughs> film again? Is that uh, is that also set in? I mean, in the real today's world? No, or? 1945. Oh really? He even goes okay. back further. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that'll be yeah, a new period, phase. Period. Yes. Peace. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Barbara is, uh, I, I think, an extraordinary film, and it's interesting that Kirch it's been. Kirch Thank you. I got the name. <laughs> is it? Yeah, okay, I've got it. <laughs> but Barbara is, is a film that uh, I've seen reactions to outside Germany, and they've always been very positive. So in France and Switzerland, I know people who've seen that film, and they've all been impressed by it. It stands out, it gets very good reviews, but 
it's a sort of slow burning film. It hasn't got any big glamour about it, uh, but but it's so good. It's so well directed that it's found its uh, niche, hasn't it? You yeah. said you had good reactions even in America when you went. Yeah, yeah. No, it it was. It, also, what I really found the most interesting, maybe even, was the reactions within Germany. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the reactions of showing the film in the East and in the West. Yeah. And it was like, through that movie, um, the West got to, not to learn, but experience something else yeah. of the East. I, something, it's, sometimes I, I thought we, we talk about Thailand or something, mm-hmm. you know, so it's a, where you, you think, yeah, they were amazed of seeing a different kind of, like a colorful GDR, uh, yeah. you know, sensual GDR, yeah. and, and, and all. And the Easterners, of course, were happy yeah. to have that side portrayed, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. But it's also not a movie which says, oh, it was also, you know, it goes along with the nostalgia. Yeah. Um, so it, um, it was just a, a, an honest try to portray. That that time, and yet it works. It transcends that that setting because people outside Germany who see that film don't necessarily get all the references yeah. to the GDR. But the human story is so strong mm-hmm. that uh, it, it just seems to grab you. It, uh, yeah, you can put it maybe into anywhere. any kind of dictatorship. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, the, you you can. This trying to make the world you live in a, a better place, and yeah. when when do you fight? When do you give up hope? Yeah. When Barbara's very alone at the beginning, and at the end she has a partner. Whatever happens with them, yeah. but she's not alone anymore. Yeah. And if you're not alone, you have more. Um, and she's saved, the, or she's given the chance to a younger person to live a better life in the West. That's the, yeah. Uh, the also, yeah. yeah. But yeah. also, I always thought it's her. It's not so much this, of course she cares for that girl and she knows she needs to leave Mm. because she's pregnant and she won't survive, she won't have a good life in this country and Barbara can handle it better than this girl. That's in it as well, but it's also a decision, no, I'm not quite done Mm. Mm. with this country Mm. Uh, and uh, I want to go back and I have someone I can maybe rely on, at least I want to give it a try and... um, and change things, yes. and that I find very. Uh, it takes a lot of um, courage. I well, admire it. Well, this scene shows uh, Barbara being reunited with her lover, who has already established himself in the West and is trying to get Barbara out over the border. And they meet in a in a hotel. And you begin once again. You suggest just so well at the very end of this uh, scene, as far as I recall, you you suggest that you have some misgivings, you have some second thoughts about going over to the West and maybe this is not the right thing to do. Can we have the next clip, please?
And then you went to make gold, which was an altogether change of pace because it was a big, widescreen, western, shot on location, riding horseback, all those things. Maybe you hadn't done much in movies before, but uh, wh where was that shot and how long did that take to do? Uh, we shot it last year, uh, no, no, two years ago, so 2012, in Canada, in British Columbia. Right. And again, it was a bit uh, like the experience in Africa, yeah. that uh, we were out there on a ranch for eight weeks again. Uh, with really, we had internet, but that, that was it. <laughs> and, right. and we were surrounded by coyotes and uh, yeah. horses and yeah. cats and dogs and, yeah, and I... I I actually decided I stayed there for the whole uh, of the eight weeks. Others had to go to civilization, yeah. but I just... Uh, well, you're I the last survivor, so you it. have to. You had to stay the whole true, time. True. <laughs> yeah, no, it was amazing because uh, I learned how to ride the horse. Another experience yeah. I would have only... Like, only through my profession I, I do those things. And, um, and then... So I, we literally sometimes we, we were riding to the set... Mm -hmm. You know, normally you have a car or something, but yeah, yeah. you were riding to the set, which was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was just an incredible experience being there. And uh, once again, the, you mentioned you have an obstinate trait in some of these films, in, in Barbara certainly. Well, I think you're very obstinate in that role. You refuse to give in. You refuse first to give in to these macho men who, who meet you at the beginning uh, and take your money for a gold stake. And then you refuse to give in as gradually uh, people start to fall and die. You, you refuse, you, you say, we must keep going, we must keep going. Mm -hmm. So you become, the, you become the central backbone of the whole film, really. Yeah, because, again, I looked at where does this woman come from and in which time does she live in? And other than, of course, I know that she'll survive at the end, so yeah. I have to portray her quite strong. But uh, it came for me, she's very pragmatic, mm. Prussian, Mm -hmm. And uh, so you don't, also there's a scene where you have to um, amputate, do you say that? Yeah, yeah amputate, yes. amputate a, yeah. a, a leg. leg yeah. And of course you make the decision, do I portray her with uh, tears running down mm. and because uh, you can't handle the situation then. And I always thought if you're this pragmatic and you've probably seen a lot living yeah. in New York in those days, yeah. Yeah. 1897, yeah. you know, it was grim, gruesome yeah. and uh, horrible. And so they, they already she went through a life which was hard. Mm -hmm. So you go through it, you can't give in to your sentiment because mm -hmm. then you, you're going to die, you're going to crumble. Yeah. 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 So you have to keep it up. Yeah. The only moment she allows herself to, f to portray her feelings is when he actually dies. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but th so it's it's both it's vulnerability but but strength also mm. yeah it's like an, an enduring mm. yeah that. and she begins as as a sort of very well dressed aristocratic woman who descends from the train with her baggage and you end with all the niceties of being cast away you're just surviving you know mm. you don't yeah, have a shower a every freedom. day <laughs> yeah it was like a I also felt it that the, the I was sometimes rolling in the dirt and mm. things like that. You know, you you feel like ah, you know, mm. I, I, I'm on a journey. I, uh, I I can free myself from everything that is expected mm. from her. Yeah. So this lot lots of these women. It, it's a story about the gold rush in the Klondike, and a lot of these women um, re recreated themselves mm. because there was no law yet. Uh, men were too busy to find mm -hmm. gold and all of that, so right. uh, no one could hinder them to become business women or right. take yeah. on a claim as well and yeah. look for gold. And yeah, yeah. so they they, uh, they they reinvented themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. other than being just the wives and, and staying yeah. at home. Yeah. Yeah. You see that in uh, some of the films your friend James Stewart made, some of those great westerns of the 50s where they go up to the Klondike and uh, they come to these small towns where uh, often women are controlling the bars with an mm -hmm. iron hand, you know, they've learned to survive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we've got the final extract from Gold where you're riding with the last surviving companion. I think there are, how many, eight people starting out in eight yeah. or nine? Yeah, and it whittles down to just one when we see this clip. So can we have the final clip, please?
think it, your body language is so eloquent in, in that whole sequence. I mean, in the small scene when he puts a coat around your shoulders, the way you hunch forward, and then on the horse. I mean, what, what kind of um, instruction did Thomas Osman give you when you're riding in long shot? Do you have, you sense this sort of complete depression, yeah, you're completely down. But you suggest that with the way you write. He left it up for, uh, to us, yeah. really, yeah. Uh, I was always saying, well, I guess the longer you write, the less upright you mm. can sit, you know. So uh, we were looking for this kind of, uh, but okay. individually. So there was no group uh, thing of how we now start writing in yeah. which scene. But I, I was looking for that, that she gets more and more tired and uh, sick of it also. <laughs> it's, you lose all your strength yeah. the longer you're on the way. Of course. Yeah. Well, now it's time for questions from the audience. Now we have a system, as you well know by now in this stage of the week, that we have microphone or microphones. But uh, please don't start talking until you have the mic. And first, if you can put your hand up and I will try and direct a mic to you. Does anybody want to ask the first question? Yes, there's two people here in the front row. Do we have a mic? Uh, hi. Um, having worked with civil directors, is there a, a sort of a style of collaboration or a, a style of direction that you find um, helps you the most? Well, I always think I love it if a director beforehand when you talk about the script and the character and what he tries to uh, achieve with the story i always want to know what am i part of you know what is the what will this whole film be like what does he want to portray he or she and uh, once i know that and once i'm on set i i really do love to discuss things beforehand and when you rehearse and shoot that when the director creates this atmosphere of freedom and being allowing us to really just experience things together as the actors, then I always uh, have the feeling that the most comes, comes out of it. I think the more a director pushes towards one certain thing, you get more tense and you try to fulfill something. Uh, and I, I experienced now if someone would do that, I experience how to, uh, I know now how to get out of that situation to not let me f be pushed into that. But um, at, at the beginning, you, you can get kind of stiff and afraid. So I, I always think if you have the feeling the director gives you a frame within, so you work within that, and then within that you're totally free and you can... Uh, by free, I also mean you don't always have to be, because as you see, I don't, I don't with the Berliner Schule at least, I, uh, you never really act really uh, expressively, yeah? <laughs> so it's not demanded of you. But, so the explosions have to be inside of me. And, that, uh, and so I'm looking for that. I don't know if they ask for it, but otherwise I wouldn't enjoy it. So, but, uh, but I have the freedom to look for those places and uh, to, to give that to the characters. That's what I uh, enjoy. Yeah. If, if a director gives me this feeling of trust, yeah. Another question? And I would, here, yeah. uh, for me it's very interesting because I mean in Germany we know you both from theater and film, of course, and I just saw Little Foxes in Schaubühne. And for me, it's very interesting to hear what, uh, how do you work in theater and how do you work in film? Because for me, I mean, I'm not playing, I'm not an actor, but that's, that seems to be a great challenge because film is such another way to act, as you said, that sometimes you have to, uh, the possibility to shoot continuously, but then sometimes not. And mm -hmm. how do you do it in theater and in film? Because you're great in both, of course. Thank you, <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, no, um, well, I always think I, uh, if I would only have shot these kind of movies, it would have been uh, hard for me as an actress because you, you are kind of, these characters are always 
in control of themselves that because they have to. So it's very interior what's happening that you can never portray like that on a stage because no one sees it. You know? So I, you can be very subtle. That's what I took from the film uh, on stage. Also, I do believe if I think clearly and explicitly, then people will sense what I try to tell or what's going on inside of the character. But of course, you have another. Um, possibility in, in, uh, while you're shooting to just work with your eyes or a little movement with the head or whatever it already expresses so much or one gesture or all of that. So um, that's the main difference which I embraced when I shot my first movie because I was amazed that that is uh, possible, that I don't have to um, show more I can just do it with the eyes, and that's very relaxing and gives me a freedom. But it's on a stage, close up. the close-up yeah. doesn't exist in theatre. No, yeah. no. And also, you can't, you know, when you're on stage, it's your full body always, and you know, and you you can't put a concentration on on your eyes or something like that. Yeah. So, but when I started to answer the question, what I meant was that on stage I can experience a lot. I can have this ride with this character for two uh, hours or two and a half hours and um, and just really throw myself uh, into it without any safety net. Uh, and, and that gives me a certain uh, freedom for the movies because I don't have the feeling I have to show it all mm -hmm. there. I can experience it on stage. <laughs> so if it's not being asked, then that's what I meant. It would be kind of frustrating you would have a little frustration after a while because you always think, yeah, but, you know, if you're an actor, you have this, uh, or at least I have energy I need to put out there. <laughs> and there you always, mm -hmm. so, which is amazing. But uh, I, I think, uh, God, without uh, the theater, I would um, burst. <laughs> Another question over here, somewhere in the front. Thank you. It's a bit along the same lines. Um, you have uh, a bit sometimes I feel in a safe haven world when you're on movies also with these very internal characters, same directors uh, but the, the program is called here uh, taking the lead which means you are also a bankable as they call it actor so with you in a main role that could already make the movie worth and being sold uh, have you had examples where you were roles offered where you said, well, I just don't want it? I mean, on the stage you are in, in, a, in a large variety of roles with a n number of directors. In movies, I could imagine you are getting role offers which you would like to refuse. Have you had that? Have yeah. you had examples? I mean, not, I, I don't want to hear names, but just stories where you say, it's just not me and I don't want to do it, just because I'm yeah. a bankable name. Uh, I don't really think that way, to be honest. You know, I, no I others just, would. You wouldn't. I know, but, but I don't would. care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get I get offered a book, and uh, I just uh, check. First of all, is this story interesting? Would I want to watch this movie? Is it uh, does it uh, grip my my interest? And do I want to learn more about about it? And uh, and is it is it written in a way that I'm you know, that it doesn't give too much away right there, that I immediately understand what it's all about. That's where I'm bored. And I, I think, well, then I don't want to spend three months of my life working on that and trying hard to make it kind of interesting. So I prefer, uh, of course, there, there are moments where you refuse a part. That, that, but I, I'm not thinking at all about, oh, they only gave me the book because they want my name. To be honest, in Germany, it doesn't work anyway. I mean, uh, it's not because I'm in a movie that it's a great success. As I mustn't think that. Uh, so it's not in my world of thinking, really. But you do refuse roles. Yeah. Why do you insist on no, refusing? No, it is just—it is just getting a bit of a feeling like. 
uh, like you probably take one out of three because you are also a bit in charge. You are a bit in charge of taking the lead. Don't as to underestimate ah, yourself. Now I see where you're heading. Yeah, you are in charge of your decisions, of course. You are in charge of your career uh, somewhat. Yeah, As an actress, it's also, uh, or actor in general, it is, of course, difficult that you... Um, you are also in need of offers, <laughs> you know, of that's, that's the other side. Good so uh, as long as there are offers, it's a great privilege to be able to uh, refuse them. But some colleagues can't and, uh, you know, because you also have to live from something. And so I'm, uh, yeah, that, that is the tricky bit <laughs> of this, of this uh, profession. So, but right now I'm lucky enough to be in that position to make a decision for, for myself and my, the way of my acting career or whatever, yeah. Mm. Of course, the, the, the John le Carre film, Most Wanted Man, uh, demands that you speak English. Is that your, was that your first English-speaking role? Or? Yeah, mm. yeah, I think so. It was the first time only in English. Do you have anything else on the horizon that might take you outside Germany? No, <laughs> no. I do I actually have one project, very exciting one, but it's uh, difficult to get it uh, financed. Right. But we'll see. It's uh, if it will t happen, then it's great. Mm. Another question? Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, I just want to refer to the question the man just asked. Mm -hmm. So, if you feel under pressure, what's the window to get out of it? How do you deal with it? Because he said you find a way how to get out of it. So, how? <laughs> Yeah, but somehow, first of all, I think, you know, if you don't know the director, because it seems like I, I only ever do movies with Christian, but I have worked with other <laughs> directors also, and uh, in movies, yeah. and, and sometimes it's, um, it can happen that you don't get along, and that puts pressure on on you, of course, because you need to feel a certain freedom to <laughs> let yourself go, be open, you know, uh, yeah. And uh, so you find a way, I somehow, I think, I mean, there is also no rule to, to things, but I, I just don't let it get to me so much, you know. That's, anyway, that's maybe something, as an actress, don't ever take things personally, you know, because then, yeah, it's a, it's a tough yeah. task, but it's... A, it's some, if you if you kind of manage that, then you're not getting hurt uh, deep inside, you know. Mm. Because it is it is a profession. You, we have to all work together. And if it doesn't quite match up, it doesn't matter. I still have to look for my um, the best means of of working, you know, the the best working conditions that I need. And then you need to uh, make sure that you get them. And that is a that is something you uh, you learn, and I'm not there yet. Also, you know, I do f f fight against my fears sometimes, and all these things. It's not that uh, every time, again and again, first time you go on stage and try to say a sentence, you think, "Oh God, I'm so bad," and I, you know, it's always the same. You start always. Of course, you have these moments, and you need them because yeah. you start like a baby again. You know, to be able to create something new that you maybe haven't done or experienced before. But that's that. Don't let anyone get uh, to you and try to destroy you or whatever. You know, just. That no one, no one uh, should be able to touch your dignity. <laughs> so, so it's useful if you have two or three directors in whom you have absolute confidence, and so when they come or the agent comes with a script that's attached for them to direct, you must feel a lot more confident about about going into that film. If I know the yeah, the, if you the, know that if you yeah. you're confident in the director, so someone like oh, Christian yeah. Passwell, Thomas Milesman, or yeah, yeah, know, uh, no, of course, because. Uh, also, if you don't know the director, but you've seen uh, works of his yeah, or her, yeah, yeah. and you know that's something you're really interested in, then, um, of course, you, you go in with a huge amount of trust mm -hmm. into their abilities. And, uh, yeah. Ever wanted to direct yourself? Yeah, but <laughs> it's a question that everyone, <laughs> once in a lifetime, an actor gets asked. <laughs> because I... I think sometimes, of course, when you do it now for quite some time, sometimes you think, wow, 
why doesn't he say this and that to her? And I, it's so easy, it's a one sentence. <laughs> you know, and, you, and you just think, oh God, <laughs> I could do that. But then in the long, I really have a huge respect for anything that is need, <laughs> needed to direct a movie and, and the theater play, you know, the overall thing. But the actual, maybe I can say something that I think and I mainly have to talk about Germany, of course, that I have the feeling there's a lack of um, interest in what the actor's job is. Mm. So there is a bit missing the language mm. to work on acting. Mm. And, uh, uh, and that, is, that is maybe something where I think, man, you should go one month to acting school. Just experience it. What, what it means and what you need to hear, like it goes back to that question, what you need to hear to get where you maybe want someone to be. You know, you don't ever achieve it with pressure, I feel. But you can kind of with certain, it's sometimes technical, yeah. you know, and, uh, and you'll get there very easily and that's where I think I'm going to direct. Yeah. <laughs> so. I've got the mic, the power over here. Um, being aware of the fact that you shot films with other directors, I still have a question on my mind concerning the collaboration with Christian Petzold. I learned that he uses to rehearse with his actors um, on set, maybe even before the, the rest of the crew joins you. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how this, these rehearsals would look like. What should you do then? Because I can't really imagine that you decide for a way to shoot it than when the rest comes, how far do you go when you rehearse and what do you... How far do I go in what sense? Uh... What, how, well, do you, do you know what the scene will look like exactly when you've finished rehearsing or, or will, there, will, will there be something added when you sh shoot it? Yeah. So, so with Christian, it's, it's always that you start the, the day, the shooting day, by going through all the scenes that you're about to do on that day which sometimes doesn't mean you, oh no, actually you rehearse, we rehearse them in the, in the actual set that we're going to shoot it in, and, but only up to a certain point. So I would, somehow the, we would never give away everything. We would just have an idea of uh, what we're looking for in that scene and maybe where our positions are. He wants us to find it so that we're not being told, well, the camera really needs you to be here and there and there. So that it's something that came out of the, uh, the rehearsal and what we found together. And then the camera, uh, the DOP is always uh, part of the rehearsal. And then the, the team comes in. So we do this rehearsal, we go and have makeup and costume, and then they uh, are in the room deciding, um, ha, was heißt Auflösung? Uh, Blocking. Anyone? Blocking? Uh, I don't know. Like, which shots to take, you know, from which angle and how many, and and uh, so that that's that's the the way we work with Christian. So it's um, we do act in the rehearsals, but only to up to a certain certain point, so that you still have a mystery of what's about to happen when the camera's on, because that's also something uh, the, the difference between theatre and film. Uh, when you hit it and you feel this is it, this is, wow, we got it, mm. in theater, then you need four weeks to find that moment again, to be able to reproduce it, because it just happens, and you, d you didn't know what was, why you said it like this, and how, how did we get there, and it's going to be bad, bad, bad for four weeks, and then you are at the, in, in this, you found the moment again. So if you do that uh, in the rehearsal, it's, really bad because we don't have four weeks to find the moment again. So that's why in, in film you have to rehearse, I, I feel, up to a certain moment where you think, oh, okay, now uh, we need the camera. And uh, that's, that's what we do there in this, in this rehearsal. Another question? One up there, I see a gentleman at the top. On the... Well, I'm, I've got the mic. Um. <laughs> Two mics. I know this happened in Howe yesterday. It really is ridiculous. It's very, it just means it'll be a bit screwed up in the film, but don't worry. Okay. Go ahead. My name is Joseph, and I have two questions for you. 
Um, the first one is about you. Um, in your career, both in your characters or as a person, are there any decisions that you've made uh, throughout that journey that uh, you had to live with though, you, you, though they were not, you know, somehow they really, they were hurting, somehow they were really challenging in your development, and if there were, how did you deal with them? Or yes, how did you deal, how did you deal with them? The second question is about your first movie, whereby you shot in Samburu. And I, you, you say that uh, one of the lead characters came from Burkina Faso, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested so much to watch the movie. And the question is, as actors, we develop a certain kind of relationship with director. Mm -hmm. um, is there a reason, for instance, like to import, um, to import, to import talent uh, or is it, was it a question of uh, sales? Was it a question of uh, talents, lack of talents? Or what, what was it? If I don't know if you were able to I, I don't quite that. understand what it, in, to import talents in what, in what way? Well, yeah, I think it means that if the actor came from Burkina Faso but you were shooting in Kenya, ah, maybe yes. there weren't anybody local to take that part. Or while there yeah, no I remember... That Hermine was casting a lot of people in Nigeria, in I think from all uh, Nigeria, sorry, in Kenya, but uh, from all over Africa, I think. And then the question was mainly, I think, um, I actually don't know why she, why she, how she found Jackie. I think it was also a matter of um, being able to talk to each other. That was one thing, yeah. and. Uh, and I, I think she looked really at a lot of actors and it wasn't anything decided from the very beginning where it has to be someone from, from Europe or so, you know. I don't think that was the case. She just um, fell in love with Jackie Ido for, for this part, you know, I think. That, that was it. Um, and the first question, what was that? The yeah. kind of decisions, if you've ever made a bad decision or a, a, a decision that has, been, has affected you, uh, have you ever dealt with that, or how do you live with that in your career, or, or maybe as a person? Yeah, I always think you... Um, well, there can be moments or uh, experiences that are really unpleasant, and they do hurt you, because um, in this profession you're very dependent, you know. You try to be as free in what you're doing as you can, but still, there's someone else who decides, which is the director. So if that is a problem and you feel I can't get through with what I <laughs> try to do, that is painful. And um, you just, I had that and I, I, you just uh, survive, really. <laughs> and it's not very pleasant and you hope for, you know, it, but it, I won't let it destroy my joy of acting, you know. That's what I meant earlier when I say don't get it, let it get personal. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a passion for what I'm doing and uh, I can, if, if you then don't get along, I don't quite understand why. It mainly has to do with um, vanity, I would feel. And then I just go, nah, okay, next. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's not very interesting, I think. And, uh, and it doesn't happen very often. And, uh, and also a bad experience can really bring you forward in your strength also, in your um, way you think, no, I, I am in charge of what I'm doing, you know, and uh, I will take that. And, and yeah, but it can, while you're in it, it's very painful. Yeah. Thank Nina, you. believe it or not, an hour and a half has gone by and you've been... This year's uh, generation of Berlinale Talents are very lucky. You couldn't come last year, but you've come this year, and you've uh, shared so much with us, and I think we know you better as a person, we know you better as an actress, and we'll all go and see your next films. So thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you for having me. Okay. <laughs> evolved during those eight weeks? Were there changes as a result of all being together in the location? Were there any scenes where you, you suddenly it started raining when it should have been sun and so you had to change? Yeah, that, that always, 
I never really experienced that you change the book. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to improvise, and uh, maybe it was meant to be outside, but then you maybe find somewhere a roof of a hut or whatever, and then you do it there because it's raining and, and so on. But you don't... Um, you hardly ever change the, like the lines or, uh, or anything like that. That's uh, yeah. Well, let's see the first extract, which shows you uh, uh, after a rather uh, brutal initiation, you uh, you decide to make up with with uh, with your friend, the, the the tall, handsome Mazai warrior, and you follow him to his village, which is quite an experience. You gradually follow him into the bush. So, can we have the first extract, please? Uh, please don't start talking until you have the mic. And first, if you can put your hand up, and I will try and direct a mic to you. Does anybody want to ask the first question? Yes, there's two people here in the front row. Do we have a mic? Uh, hi. Um, having worked with civil directors, is there a, a sort of a style of collaboration or a, a style of direction that you find? Um, helped you the most? Well, I always think I love it if a director beforehand, when you talk about the script and the character and what he tries to uh, achieve with the story, I always want to know what am I part of? You know, what is the, what will this whole film be like? What does he want to portray, he or she? And uh, once I know that and once I'm on set, I, I really do love to discuss things beforehand and when you rehearse and shoot that when the director creates this atmosphere of freedom and being allowing us to really just experience things together as the actors then I always uh, have the feeling that the most comes, comes out of it. I think the more a director pushes towards one certain thing you get more tense and try to fulfill something uh, and I, I experienced now if someone would do that I experience how to uh, I know now how to get out of that situation to not let me be pushed into that but um, at, at the beginning you you can get kind of stiff and afraid so I I always think if you have the feeling the director gives you a frame within so you work within that, and then within that you're totally free. And you can, uh, by free, I also mean you don't always have to be, because as you see, I don't, I don't with the Berliner Schule at least, I, uh, you never 
really act really uh, expressively, yeah, so it's not demanded of you, but so the explosions have to be inside of me, and that, uh, and so I'm looking for that. I don't know if they ask for it, but otherwise I wouldn't enjoy it, so, but, uh, but I have the freedom to look for those places and uh, to, to give that to the characters. That's what I uh, enjoy, yeah, if, if a director gives me this feeling of trust, yeah. Another question? And I would, here, yeah. uh, for me it's very interesting because I mean in Germany we know you both from theater and film, of course, and I just saw Little Foxes in Schaubühne. And for me it's very interesting to hear what, uh, how do you work in theater and how do you work in film? Because for me it's, it's um, it can happen that you don't get along. And that puts pressure on, uh, on you, of course, because you need to feel a certain freedom to <laughs> let yourself go, be open, you know, uh, yeah. And uh, so you find a way, I somehow, I think, I mean, there is also no rule to, to things, but I, I just don't let it get to me so much, you know. That's, anyway, that's maybe something, as an actress, don't ever take things personally, you know, because then, yeah, it's a, it's a tough task, but it's a... It's some, if, you, if you kind of manage that, then you're not getting hurt uh, deep inside, you know. Mm. Because it is, it is a profession, you, we have to all work together. And if it doesn't quite match up, it doesn't matter. I still have to look for my, um, the best means of, of working, you know, the, the best working conditions that I need. And then you need to uh, make sure that you get them. And that is a... That is something you uh, you learn, and I'm not there yet. Also, you know, I do f fight against my fears sometimes, and all these things. It's not that uh, every time, again and again, first time you go on stage and try to say a sentence, you think, "Oh God, I'm so bad," and I, you know, it's always the same. You start always. Of course, you have these moments, and you need them because yeah. you start like a baby again. You know, to be able to create something new that you maybe haven't done or experienced before. But that's that. Don't let anyone get uh, to you and try to destroy you or whatever. You know, just. That no one, no one uh, should be able to touch your dignity. <laughs> so, so it's useful if you have two or three directors in whom you have absolute confidence, and so when they come or the agent comes with a script that's attached for them to direct, you must feel a lot more confident about about going into that film. If I know the yeah, director. if you know that, if you yeah. feel confident in the director, so it's like oh, Christian yeah. Passwell, Thomas Mosman, or yeah, yeah, know, uh, no, of uh, course, because. Uh, also, if you don't know the director, but you've seen uh, works of his or yeah, her, yeah, yeah. and you know that's something you're really interested in, then, um, of course, you, you go in with a huge amount of trust mm -hmm. into their abilities. And, uh, yeah. Ever wanted to direct yourself? Yeah, but <laughs> it's a question that everyone, <laughs> once in a lifetime, an actor gets asked <laughs> because I. I think sometimes, of course, when you do it now for quite some time, sometimes you think, why doesn't he say this and that to her? And I, it's so easy, yeah. it's a one sentence. <laughs> you know, and, you, and you just think...
quite a long take uh, interrupted, but you had to do that probably in one long take, did you, the, the, uh, when you were talking like that? Yeah. yeah. I think so. I can't quite and remember. You, and you have this think. sense of foreboding. I've forgotten that when the glass drops down and you, it, it's, it goes through all the movie, doesn't it? As though you have a sense of disaster that's coming. In your sense. <clears throat> yeah, it's like something or someone or whatever that is, we don't know, calls her yeah. and um, lets her, like, she thinks she loses her ability to hear or it's like she's underwater mm -hmm. or because she was underwater at the yeah. beginning of yeah, the movie. Yeah, and yeah. so, um, and the raven is calling sometimes. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, I mean, the movie's out, the death is waiting for yeah. her, no? So that's what, the, what uh, is the irritation throughout the movie. Did the silver bear you won here for that performance, did that uh, accelerate your career? Did you get offers? Uh, did that really change the, your status? I never know with prizes. No. I just enjoy them, <laughs> and I'm very happy. You know, it's great to receive prizes for what you've done because it's somehow the only recognition you get for a, for a movie. You know, mm. you get great reviews, which is uh, hopefully you get them. That, yeah. That's uh, very good. It makes you feel good. But uh, um, to win a prize makes you just very happy that what you. I do say things differently. Mm. Um, and maybe I'm more concentrated now than I would be if you meet me outside having a coffee mm. or something mm. like that. So I always look for in, in the lines, that, the little lines I have, that I know, is there anything she's hiding? Mm. Or mm. is there a general feeling that she would be more outgoing, uh, but mm. she can't because she has to protect herself, like in mm. Barbara, you know? And that works within you. And you, uh, and that's why maybe that's the outcome of it, you know. That well, there's that marvelous scene at the beginning of Barbara when the camera looks down on you on the bench and you light a cigarette. You've just arrived and you haven't gone up to your appointment yet, but you express everything. You know that this woman is 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 in a state of anxiety somehow, and you don't know why. But it's anxiety it, and stubbornness. Yeah, I always felt like right. uh, in the school ground. Yeah. You know, no, I'm not going in. Just, you know, I wait one minute, I'm going to done it. <laughs> right. it's, it's this, also this, once you made this step of mm -hmm. being a dissident in mm. a state, you know, which takes a lot of courage, mm. uh, you, you just, you try to uh, be rebellious all the time. Mm. You want to poke into that yes. stiffness of the state or the, the injustice and all of that. So she has both things. Right. And again, so I have to decide what do I portray when, yes, when the fear, yeah. when the, you know, being, yeah, stubborn or, mm. or you know, angry or something. So, um, and these decisions, I think, I, I, them, you have to do them yourself. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I pretty much do it by being very well prepared. Mm -hmm. I need to be very well prepared before I go into a movie. Mm. Which means I mainly look for things. I do research. I I read a lot uh, if there's anything to read about, like the mm. time or something like that. And um, so these are the facts. I have them in my mm. mind. But then I also look for the atmosphere mm. that I feel surrounds the character. And I can do that uh, uh, with music. I can do that with paintings, mm. with art uh, in general. I look for, I always have lots of uh, postcards or yeah, something. Yeah. Just um, if I need a certain inspiration, then yeah. I, I know I'm surrounded with uh, things that have something to do with my character. Right. And, um, and then when I start shooting, I forget about it. Mm. Mm. I, I try to be so well prepared and knowing what I try to portray with that character that I then can be totally open and free mm. to uh, what's there. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you have an idea and it mm. doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And then you can't be always thinking, have. Ah,
And then you went to make gold, which was an altogether change of pace because it was a big, widescreen, western, shot on location, riding horseback, all those things. Maybe you hadn't done much in movies before. But uh, wh where was that shot and how long did that take to do? Uh, we shot it last year, uh, no, no, two years ago, so 2012, in Canada, in British Columbia. And again, it was a bit uh, like the experience in Africa yeah. that uh, we were out there on a ranch for eight weeks again. Uh, with really, we had internet, but that, that was it. Right. <laughs> and we were surrounded by coyotes and uh, horses and yeah. cats and dogs. And yeah, and I, I actually decided. I stayed there for the whole uh, of the eight weeks. Others had to go to civilization, yeah. <laughs> but I just... Uh, well, you're the last survivor, so you have, to, you have to stay the whole true, time. <laughs> true. Yeah, no, it was amazing because uh, I learned how to ride the horse, another experience yeah. I would have only, like, only through my profession I, I do those things. And, um, and then, so I, we literally sometimes we, we were riding to the set Mm -hmm. You know, normally you have a car or something, but yeah, yeah. you were riding to the set, which was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was just an incredible experience being there. And uh, once again, the, you mentioned you have an obstinate trait in some of these films, in, in Barbara certainly. Well, I think you're very obstinate in that role. And I, I pretty much do it by being very well prepared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need to be very well prepared before I go into a movie, mm. which means I mainly look for things, I do research, I, I read a lot, uh, if there's anything to read about, like the time or something like that. And um, so these are the facts, I have them in my mind. But then I also look for the atmosphere hmm. that I feel surrounds the character. And I can do that uh, uh, with music, I can do that with paintings, hmm. with art uh, in general. I look for, I always have lots of uh, postcards or yeah, something. Yeah. Just, um, if I need a certain inspiration, then yeah. I, I know I'm surrounded with uh, things that have something to do with my character. Right. And, um, and then when I start shooting, I forget about it. Mm -hmm. I, I try to be so well prepared and knowing what I try to portray with that character that I then can be totally open and free mm -hmm to uh, what's there, mm -hmm. because sometimes you have an idea and it mm. doesn't work, it just doesn't work. And then you can't be always thinking, ah, it would have been so nice, mm. you know, it was a great idea. So let go, you know, just look what, what um, your colleague brings. Mm. Uh, his eyes tell something really different. He decided to portray it differently from yeah. what I thought would be good, maybe, yeah. or what I hoped for. And uh, it doesn't matter, maybe that's better, you know, yeah. so I... Because I had prepared myself, I can experience it. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, that's what I'm actually looking for. That's mm -hmm. the fun of it. That I can experience things, different lives throughout my characters. Mm. Well, we'll see a clip from Yella now. And uh, I chose this one because up until this point in the film, y you could be dismissed as just a pretty face. And then suddenly in this scene, you reveal that you have a skill as an accountant and that you're no fool and that you've seen that there's a scam going on. And uh, I think it's a very good example of your craft as an actress um, that you, uh, you, you express things little by little through your, through your face. So can we have the next uh, clip, please? anything that is need, <laughs> needed uh, to direct a movie and, and the theater play, you know, the overall thing. But the actual, uh, maybe I can say something that I think, and I mainly have to talk about Germany, of course, that I have the feeling there's a lack of um, interest in what the actor's job is. Mm. 
so there is a bit missing the language mm. to work on acting and uh, and that is that is maybe something where i think man you should go one month to acting school just experience it what what it means and what you need to hear like it goes back to that question what you need to hear to get where you maybe want someone to be you know you don't ever achieve it with pressure i feel but you can kind of with certain it's sometimes technical yeah. you know and uh, and you'll get there very easily and that's where i think i'm going to direct yeah. <laughs> so I've got the mic, the power over here. Um, being aware of the fact that you shot films with other directors, I still have a question on my mind concerning the collaboration with Christian Petzold. I learned that he uses to rehearse with his actors um, on set, maybe even before the, the rest of the crew joins you. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how this, these rehearsals would look like. What should you do then? Because I can't really imagine that you decide for a way to shoot it than when the rest comes, how far do you go when you rehearse? And what do you... How far do I go in what sense? Uh, what, how, well, do you, do you know what the scene will look like exactly when you've finished rehearsing? Or, or will, there, will, will there be something added when you sh shoot it? Yeah. So, so with Christian, it's, it's always that you start the, the day, the shooting day, by going through all the scenes that you are about to do on that day which sometimes doesn't mean you, oh no, actually you rehearse, we rehearse them in the, in the actual set that we're going to shoot it in, and, but only up to a certain point. So I would, somehow the, we would never give away everything. We would just have an idea of uh, what we're looking for in that scene and maybe where our positions are. He wants us to find it so that we're not being told, well, the camera really needs you to be here and there and there. So that it's something that came out of the, uh, the rehearsal and what we found together. And then the camera, uh, the DOP is always uh, part of the rehearsal. And then the, the team comes in. So we do this rehearsal, we go and have makeup and costume, and then they uh, are in the room deciding um, Huh. Also, you can't, you know, when you're on stage, it's your full body always, and you know, and you you can't put a concentration on on your eyes or something like that. Yeah. So, but when I started to answer the question, what I meant was that on stage I can experience a lot. I can have this ride with this character for two uh, hours or two and a half hours, and. Um, and just really throw myself uh, into it without any safety net. Uh, and, and that gives me a certain uh, freedom for the movies because I don't have the feeling I have to show it all there. Mm -hmm. I can experience it on stage. <laughs> so if it's not being asked, then that's what I meant. It would be kind of, you would have a little frustration after a while because you always think, yeah, but you know if you're an actor you have this uh, or at least i have uh, energy i need to put out there <laughs> and there you always mm -hmm. so which is amazing but uh, i i think uh, god without uh, the theater i would um, burst <laughs> another question over here somewhere in the front. thank you it's a bit on along the same lines um you have uh, a bit sometimes I feel in a safe haven world when you're on movies, also with these very internal characters, same directors. Uh, but the, the program is called here uh, Taking the Lead, which means you are also a bankable, as they call it, actor. So with you in a main role that could already make the movie worth and being sold. Uh, have you had examples where you were roles offered where you said, well, I just don't want it? I mean, on the stage you are in, in, a, in a large variety of roles with a n number of directors. In movies, I could imagine you are getting role offers which you would like to refuse. Have you had that? Have yeah. you had examples? I mean, not, I, I don't want to hear names, but just stories where you say, it's just not me and I don't want to do it, just because I'm yeah. a bankable name. 
uh, I don't really think that way, to be honest. You know, I, no I others just, would. You wouldn't. I know, but, but I don't would. care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get I get offered a book, and uh, I just uh, check. First of all, is this story interesting? Would I want to watch this movie? Is it uh, does it uh, grip my my interest? And do I want to learn more about about it? And uh, and is it is it written in a way that I'm you know, that it doesn't give too much away right there, that I immediately understand what it's all about. That's where I'm bored. And I, I think, well, then I don't want to spend three months of my life working on that and trying hard. need to hear, like it goes back to that question, what you need to hear to get where you maybe want someone to be. You know, you don't ever achieve it with pressure, I feel. But you can kind of with certain, it's sometimes technical, yeah. you know, and, uh, and you'll get there very easily and that's where I think I'm going to direct. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I've got the mic, the power over here. Um, being aware of the fact that you shot films with other directors, I still have a question on my mind concerning the collaboration with Christian Petzold. I learned that he uses to rehearse with his actors um, on set, maybe even before the, the rest of the crew joins you. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how this, these rehearsals would look like. What should you do then? Because I can't really imagine that you decide for a way to shoot it, then when the rest comes, how far do you go when you rehearse? And what do you... How far do I go in what sense? Uh, what, how, well, do you, do you know what the scene will look like exactly when you've finished rehearsing? Or, or will, there, will, will there be something added when you sh shoot it? Yeah. So. 
so with Christian, it's it's always that you start the the day, the shooting day, by going through all the scenes that you are about to do on that day, which sometimes doesn't mean you. Oh no, actually, you rehearse. We rehearse them in the in the actual set that we're going to shoot it in, and but only up to a certain point. So I would somehow the, we would never give away everything. We would just have an idea of uh, what we're looking for in that scene and maybe where our positions are. He wants us to find it so that we're not being told, well, the camera really needs you to be here and there and there. So that it's something that came out of the, uh, the rehearsal and what we found together. And then the camera, uh, the DOP is always uh, part of the rehearsal. And then the, the team comes in. So we do this rehearsal, we go and have makeup and costume, and then they uh, are in the room deciding, um, ha, was heißt Auflösung? Uh, Blocking. Anyone? Blocking? No, I don't know. Like, which shots to take, you know, from which angle and how many, and, and uh, so that, that's, that's the, the way we work with Christian. So it's... Um, we do act in the rehearsals, but only to up to a certain, certain point, so that you still have a mystery of what's about to happen when the camera's on. Because that's also something, uh, the, the difference between theater and film. Uh, when you hit it and you feel, this is it, this is, wow, we got it, mm. in theater, then you need four weeks to find that moment again. was also what I really found the most interesting, maybe even, was the reactions within Germany. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the reactions of 
showing the film in the East and in the West. Yeah. And it was like through that movie, um, the West got to, not to learn, but experience something else yeah. of the East. I, it's something, it's, sometimes I, I thought we, we talk about Thailand or something, mm. you know, so it's a, where you, you think, yeah, they were amazed of seeing a different kind of, like a colorful GDR, uh, yeah. you know, sensual GDR, yeah. and, 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 all, and the Easterners, of course, were happy yeah. to have that side portrayed, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah. But it's also not a movie which says, oh, it was also, you know, it goes along with the nostalgia. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, um, it was just a, a, an honest try to portray that, that time. And yet it works, it transcends that, that setting because people outside Germany who see that film don't necessarily get all the references yeah. to the GDR, but the human story is so strong that uh, it, it just seems to grab you. It, uh, yeah, you can put it maybe into anywhere. any kind of dictatorship, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, the, you, you can... This trying to make the world you live in a, a better place. And yeah. when, when do you fight? When do you give up hope? Yeah. When Barbara's very alone at the beginning and at the end she has a partner. Whatever happens with them, yeah. but she's not alone anymore. Yeah. And if you're not alone, you have more... Um, and she's saved, the, or she's given the chance to a younger person to live a better life in the West. That's the, yeah, uh, the also, yeah. yeah. But yeah. also, I always thought it's her, it's not so much this, of course she cares for that girl and she knows she needs to leave because mm. she's pregnant and she won't survive, yeah. she won't have a good life in this country and Barbara can handle it better than this girl. That's in it as well, but it's also a decision... No, I'm not quite done mm, mm. with this country. Mm. Uh, and uh, I want to go back, and I have someone I can maybe rely on. At least yeah. I want to give it a try and, um, and change things. Yes. And that I find very... Uh, it's, it takes a lot of um, courage. I well, admire it. Well, this scene shows uh, Barbara being reunited with her lover who has already established himself in the West and is trying to get Barbara out over the border and they meet in a, in a hotel and you begin, once again, you suggest just so well at the very end of this uh, scene, as far as I recall, you, you suggest that you have some misgivings, you have some second thoughts about going over to the West and maybe this is not the right thing to do. Can we have
quite a long take uh, interrupted, but you had to do that probably in one long take, did you, the, the, uh, when you were talking like that? Yeah. yeah. I think so. I can't quite and remember. You, and you have this maybe. sense of foreboding. I've forgotten that when the glass drops down and you, it, it's, it goes through all the movie, doesn't it? As though you have a sense of disaster that's coming. In your sense. <clears throat> yeah, it's like something or someone or whatever that is, we don't know, calls her. Yeah. And um, lets her, like, she thinks she loses her ability to hear or it's like she's underwater mm -hmm. or because she was underwater at the yeah. beginning of yeah, the movie. Yeah, and yeah. As an actress, um, that you, you, you express things little by little through your, through your face. So can we have the next uh, clip, please? Do you usually have a good uh, rapport with the cinematographer on, on, on a film like that? I mean, is that important to have good relations with the cinematographer, costume designers, and so on? Do you get involved in that at all? Yeah, you get, you get involved uh, mainly with the costume designer because yeah. you have to uh, create the outside of your character together. And uh, it's very crucial what kind of shoes you're wearing, for example, or what kind of dresses, are they tight uh, or are they light and, uh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, what would the character go for to portray herself, you know, what does she, um, like here for the first time we had lots of jewelry mm -hmm. and that, and, and kind of cheap golden yeah. jewelry, so uh, because it also portrays some where you're from. Yeah. what you find uh, attractive yeah. and, and, yes. how, uh, and how, so it, um, it helps you to already tell something without me having to act anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, then of course I, I, I always prefer to have a very good relationship with the cinematographer because 
he films you. Yeah. <laughs> so good and side, also with the light side. light guys, uh, yeah. that's also very yeah. good if you have a good uh, relationship with them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but it's uh, the main partners you have. Yeah, I would say is maybe the cinematographer, yeah. the director, and then makeup and and costume. Yeah. That's uh, they're right on you, you mm -hmm. know, and work with you. Yeah. When you were when you were growing up, did you have uh, any actress who really impressed you and who later you perhaps referred to as a, as an ideal as a model uh, actress? Many, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, sometimes it's also. Uh, I mean, I grew up every Sunday when I grew up. There were only three programs on television, <laughs> and uh, when I was a child, and every Sunday you would see classics. And I, was, I wasn't allowed to watch television, but mm -hmm. one film mm -hmm. on Sunday. And so I grew up with the old Betty Davis uh, mm -hmm. films. With, uh, I was also uh, you know, a huge fan of James Stewart, of uh, all these, of Paul Newman, of yeah. uh, not only female act actresses, right. you know, so, but I watched all these classics, Catherine Hepburn, Humphrey Bogart, mm -hmm. all of them. They really inspired me. And, and then later on, it was the French movies so it was uh, Romy Schneider for sure mm -hmm. and from her um, because it seems so obvious uh, Romy Schneider but she is an amazing actress mm -hmm. you know, she was because she lets you look inside the windows you know her eyes yeah. she is uh, or she was able to Do you usually have a good uh, rapport with the cinematographer on, on, on a film like that? I mean, is that important to have good relations with the cinematographer, costume designers, and so on? Do you get involved in that at all? Yeah, you get, you get involved uh, mainly with the costume designer because you have to uh, create the outside of your character together. And uh, it's very crucial what kind of shoes you're wearing, for example, or what kind of dresses, are they tight uh, or are they light and, uh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, what would the character... Oh, they were really challenging in your development and if there were, how did you deal with them or yes, how did you deal, how did you deal with them? The second question is about your first movie. 
whereby you shot in Samburu. And I, you, you say that uh, one of the lead characters came from Burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, I'm interested so much to watch the movie. And the question is, as actors, we develop a certain kind of relationship with director. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a reason, for instance, like to import, um, to import, to import talent? Uh, or is it, was it a question of uh, sales? Was it a question of uh, talents, lack of talents? Or what, what was it? If I don't know if you able to. I don't answer. quite understand what it, Im, to import talents in what what way. Well, yeah, I think it means that if the actor came from Burkina Faso, but you were shooting in Kenya, ah, maybe yes. there weren't anybody local to take that part. Or while there. Yeah, I remember uh, that Hermine was casting a lot of people in Nigeria, in I think from all uh, Nigeria, sorry, in Kenya but uh, from all over Africa, I think. And then the question was mainly, I think, um, I actually don't know why she, why she, how she found Jackie. I think it was also a matter of um, being able to talk to each other. That was one thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I think she looked really at a lot of actors and it wasn't anything decided from the very beginning where it has to be someone from from Europe or so, you know. I don't think that was the case. She just um, fell in love with Jackie Ido for, for this part, you know, I think. That that was it. Um, and the first question, what was that? The yeah. kind of decisions, if you've ever made a bad decision or a, um, a decision that has been, has affected you, uh, have you ever dealt with that or how do you live with that in your career or, or maybe as a person? Yeah, I always think you, um, well, there can be moments or uh, experiences that are really unpleasant and they do hurt you because um, in this profession you're very dependent, you know. You try to be as free in what you're doing as you can, but still there's someone else who decides, which is the director. So if that is a problem and you feel I can't get through with what I <laughs> try to do, that is painful. And um, you just, I had that and I, I, you just uh, survive, really. <laughs> and it's not very pleasant and you hope for, you know, it, but it, I won't let it destroy my joy of acting. To be able to have a script or a playwright uh, and work on it on my own mm. without mm. having to always be dependent or rely on the director or my my fellow colleagues mm. so for that reason i think it it gives you self-confidence as an actor uh, having been uh, in acting school that's at least what i yeah. can say for myself were you already there when you made the girl rosemary in 19 yeah, yeah yeah i was it was i was in my first year mm -hmm. of acting school and uh, in those days, that has changed, I think, sadly, but uh, you weren't allowed to go out and shoot or do theater performances or whatever in those days. Mm. So, but they, they did give me that chance because I asked for it, yeah. because I said, Mensch, Bernd Eichinger, it was a very yeah. famous uh, producer who sadly passed away, uh, but, um, and it was a brilliant script. It was an amazing part for, mm -hmm. I was 19, you know, or, or 20 then. And it was just something, I said, I can't mm. not do it, uh, but please let me come back. <laughs> and, and then they, uh, they agreed. Yeah. And then several years passed, and you suddenly you're in White Mazai, which is 2005, I think. Uh, three, even. Three, maybe yeah. shot in three, but really, okay. Yeah, and, uh, maybe. Uh, that was one of the most demanding parts you've ever had, I would think, because you were on location for eight weeks in Africa. Mm -hmm. Could you say, tell us about that, how you, how you all survived, how, how big the crew was? And, it, I, I can't even tell how many people. I, I guess it was 130 or 100. It, it, it was huge. Also. And we lived in the bushes with the Samburu warriors. It is a story about a white Swiss lady going, a, a true story, going to live with a Maasai and marry him and uh, then about her experiences there with, with him and the, and the Samburu tribe. Mm -hmm. And we actually lived with them mm -hmm. in the bush, as you said, for eight weeks. Mm -hmm. And in a camp, uh, we, I was in a tent for, for eight weeks and 
we pretty much experienced what life is. Other than we didn't live in these huts, you know, that was a bit... I was once in there, there was one scene when uh, I'm heavily pregnant and uh, uh, the baby's about to come and all that, and uh, they built this hut and we were in it, and I remember it was raining these worms, you know, because it was fresh coo, uh, cow poo. Yeah. And <laughs> I just said, oh, no, 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 I can't. that would be really yeah. too much. So we didn't experience that. We had tents at least. But, but that shows in the film. It has an authentic quality. Yeah. Both the acting and the shooting, everything is very authentic in that. Yeah, it helps you. Yeah. At least for me, I'm very curious, mm -hmm. I think. I'm a curious person and I love uh, getting... Yeah, and you follow him to his village, which is quite an experience. You gradually follow him into the bush. So can we have the first extract, please? 